The following video is not intended to cause personal offense nor to be interpreted as a personal attack on the individuals included or mentioned in the video. Should the person or people included or mentioned in the video feel that I have not exercised enough discretion to meet with the above mentioned criteria, this video will be removed should they demand that it be done. Enjoy. Do you see it? This is where our childhoods were forged. This is where we grew up. It is the birthplace of our memories. Memories we resent, but also memories we cherish. But today, there is no memory. World of Warcraft has become a barren wasteland, a shadow of its former self. Subscription numbers decay with each passing day. The community can no longer sustain itself. No one asks what is going to happen, because we all know the numbers don't lie. The question is, when? For a time, the starving player community, at least what remains of it, felt that hope was on the horizon when Blizzard had released what most consider to be the most unorthodox of raid tiers yet. Unfortunately, the joy did not last. After all, the neckbeard lord himself was but one raid boss encounter. Ever since then, no news or words of comfort came from high above. Blizzard fell silent. Many who once held hope disappeared to play other video games. Most of them could not bear to play a game. A dying game. The developers have abandoned us. Or so we thought. It was until one curious player stumbled upon a very remarkable discovery. Let me tell you what happened that day. Day 1 It all started near Boralus, when a lonely player by the name of Red Boy God stood afloat a trusty small raft, fishing in the sea to complete his scent of the sea achievement. For that, he needed to convert 100 fish into aromatic fish oil. He wasn't even halfway through on his progress, and he already started shaking. He wasn't sure if he was going to make it. You see, Red Boy God was a jittery fellow with a predisposition to severe anxiety. Wiped in a dungeon, Red Boy would take the blame. Wiped in a raid, feeling guilty over his poor performance. Unfortunately, his immediate surroundings consisted of skilled and talented players, but harsh and unforgiving. And Red Boy was far from being their match. Over time, his blunders earned him quite the reputation. People dubbed him a sore loser, good for nothing, trash, red main by the way, noob, dighead, clown, etc, etc, etc. This was too much pressure for young red boy. He loved running dungeons, he loved raiding, he loved group content, he loved action. But no group would ever bear to invite him, let alone withstand him, even for a second. He simply kept falling behind at every turn. So poor little red boy retreated to solo content, where he found solace in farming mounts, pets, toys, transmog, and like today, achievements. It was right after he caught his 69th fish that something unusual caught little red boy's attention. He stared with bewildered eyes at what he had found. What was it? He couldn't say. He was as surprised as he was confused, but he knew he had to investigate. His fingers blazed across his keyboard as he went on to inquire a game master about his unusual discovery, and with a click, he sent the ticket. In the meantime, Little Red Boy pondered what had just happened. Could it be that he had gotten his hands on something he was never meant to have? After all, it would not have been the first time that an unintended item found its way into a player's inventory. The GM responded, I understand you have questions concerning the time-worn fishing lure of unfulfilled dreams and desires, Red Boy? The GM asked. Yes, Red Boy responded. I am not allowed to tell you, it's a mystery. You have to unravel it for yourself, Red Boy. But one thing I can tell you, it's a part of something bigger than ourselves. Though the GM's message was cryptic at best, Little Red Boy was ecstatic. He knew that it meant new content, and not just any new content, but something he could do alone. And he was more than eager to do it. 
So he went on an adventure to find out more about the mystery. One minute later, Red Boy had given up. He realized how large the world actually is, and he had no idea where to start. The possibilities were many. The thought of this put too much pressure on him. Disappointed in himself, he went back to fishing. Day 17 Red Boy decided it was a good time to try his luck on collecting mounts. So he went over to the Throne of Thunder, with his eyes set on the spawn of Horidon, as well as the clutch of Jikun. He blazed through with relative ease, thanks to scaling. He killed Jikun and then put himself at a distance between her corpse and himself to make his slow RP walk. Which, as we all know, is guaranteed to increase the mount's drop chance. Slowly and steadily, with rising anticipation, his mouse hovered over the corpse and... No mount. Oh well. But wait. What is this? <gasps> the flame was rekindled, but this time, Red Boy demanded answers. However, the GM refused to tell him the truth. <sighs> Back to square one, I guess. No, this time, the urge was too strong. He needed answers, and he needed them now. Ticket after ticket, his persistence was unmatched. The fire inside him burned white hot. It was galvanizing, and after the 42nd attempt, the GM had enough. You're playing a very dangerous game here, the GM warned him. If you tell me, I will stop spamming you. Okay? Okay. Well, that was easy. The items in your possession were left behind by an ancient entity, one who has not been seen on Azeroth since a time untold. But you found them, Red Boy, and that is a sign. It means he is coming. And with him comes retribution. Uh, what? Go to Uther's tomb in the Western Plaguelands. Look for a metal bar door. There you will find your answer. Oh, and take the two items with you. But you must hurry. Time is of the essence. How so? asked Red Boy. Because, Red Boy, his rent is due. Day 18 As per the Game Master's instructions, Red Boy went over to visit Uther's tomb, and there he found the metal bar door. But that's it. It was just an ordinary metal bar door. But then, the feather and the lure suddenly began to glow with a faint light, almost as if they begged to be connected. The temptation was irresistible. With a click of the mouse and a bright flash, the items had merged. Red Boy looked up and suddenly, right behind the metal door, there, a green portal appeared. Red Boy knew what this meant, but he wasn't sure what secrets lay within. Day 19. Red Boy was contemplating his recent discovery. If the contents of the new mysterious raid were what he suspected to be, he knew this was an opportunity he could not miss. It has been ages since the game offered something new, and now there was something new. Red Boy was hungry for content, and raiding was on the menu. For this, however, he needed a group. So he decided to contact those closest to him, his guild. Hey guys, Blizzard put a new raid to the game. Does anybody want to go and try it out with me? He didn't do it. What stopped him? It was an epiphany. If his guild agreed on making a group, he would not get invited. Red Boy knew. Nobody wanted to play with him, and we all know why. He was too much of an underperformer. His DPS was stagnant. His ability to cope with mechanics was embarrassingly lackluster. What was he meant to do then? He wanted to try out this new raid badly, but no one would let a bad player in. Not unless the raid was either on farm or several tiers behind. No, not today. This time, young Red Boy was determined. Either he steps into that raid, or no one will. 
With this newfound purpose, Red Boy popped open his web browser and started putting together a battle plan. He trained for days on end, disregarding his diet, disregarding his sleep schedule. Only his goal sustained him, his lust for success. He grinded the training dummy until he has mastered his rotation. His mouse was on fire, his keyboard was on fire, fingers blazing. His goal, his legacy, he would make a mark on history. 14 days later, Red Boy re-emerged, a new man. His confidence was at full capacity. His technique was mastered. He was ready. Finally, he let his guild know. The promise of new content quickly caught everyone's attention. Suffice to say, his guild was ecstatic. Suddenly, one of his guild members sent him a whisper. A mysterious fellow named Spyro Gaspinar, who was never really a talkative fellow until now. Hey, Red Boy. Mind telling me who is the new raid boss? Hmm. Okay. It's... Ten minutes later, Red Boy guided his raid to Uther's tomb. However, this is where everyone noticed something unusual. The area was now flagged for free-for-all PvP, so the guild simply agreed on not killing each other. Easy as that. There at the tomb, Red Boy pointed at the metal bar door, but no one could see the raid portal. His guild members were confused. For a moment, they thought Red Boy was playing silly games with them. But Red Boy knew that it was there. It had to be. He approached closer, holding up his bindings of the cash seeker, and suddenly, the raid portal opened. His guild cheered and cried tears of joy. A new raid, new content. It did not take long for the guild leader to put together a group. Red Boy waited patiently for his invite, but as time passed on, he didn't get invited. Uh, guys? What about me? He wrote. Yeah, uh, you're not getting invited. But, but I've trained for this moment. Yeah, sure, like you always do. Listen, Junior, we'll bring you in when we've got the raid on farm, okay? Red Boy was devastated. This was his dream, his ambition his passion, and it all crumbled in front of him like shattered glass. That was until Spyro Gaspinar stepped in. I spoke with the guild leader. I have convinced him to invite you. I am doing this for you, red boy. Promise not to fuck up. Got it? And then he got his invite. He thanked his new friend gleefully. Hope has been restored. Red Boy was finally in. It was time to raid. Uh, I can't get in. No one could. Everyone looked Red Boy's way. Red Boy got nervous. He wasn't sure what to do. He panicked. He tried searching the entire tomb. Maybe there was a button? A lever? Something else to open the door with? Hey, Red Boy, said Spyro Gaspinar try using the bindings. Good idea, Spyro, replied Red Boy. He clicked on the bindings, and suddenly, there was a bright flash. The bindings appeared in front of the raid, floating in the air. Suddenly, on everyone's screen, they could see a progress bar, which slowly began to fill up. Amazing. But then, out of nowhere, the ground began to tremble. There was a strange sound outside. What was happening? The guild went outside to investigate, only to discover that the area has been surrounded by a pack of skull-level spectral normies. This was Red Boy's chance to prove his mettle. Alright guys, we need a battle plan, said the guild leader. No wait, I've got a better idea, said Spyro Gaspinar. So everybody waited. It was then that Spyro whispered to Red Boy. I read about these guys through data mining. You need to go in and hit them first. Are you sure about that? Asked Red Boy. Trust me, Spyro assured him. Red Boy trusted him, because Red Boy trusts his friends. He charged headlong into the enemy file. Wait, what the fuck is he doing? Everybody asked the question. He pulled the mops. The damage was unbearable. His guild's healers had to fight tooth and nail to keep him alive. He was this far from death, but luckily, the tanks intervened on time. Red boy, you idiot, what are you doing? <laughs> what a loser, Spyro chuckled. Man, I can't believe I trusted you. 
dumbass, said the guild leader. This was the pinnacle of humiliation. The pain was too much for him to handle. Red Boy was in tears. He ran away and hid behind a tree, sobbing, weeping, heartbroken. In the meantime, his guilt had a lot of work on their hands. Cue the combat analysis. These enemies had a high health pool and a small arsenal of abilities, however deadly, that the players had to contend with. When a spectral normie cast an aggressive repost, they would steal the last damaging ability of their target. The spectral normie would then perform 10 casts of this ability in the span of 2 seconds. The second ability was the Knee Slapper. When a spectral normie performed a Knee Slapper, it would channel a short speech that attempted to provoke laughter. It was crucial that players resisted laughing, otherwise they would earn themselves a one-shot. Why are football stadiums so cool? Because every seat has a fan in it. <laughs> the third ability was Cultural Appropriation which encouraged skilled tank swapping. Every attack performed by a spectral normie applied a stack of cultural appropriation. At 20 stacks, a player would become mind-controlled. In total, there were five of them, so it was important to manage all of them well, because cultural appropriation was not dispellable. If necessary, their DPS could taunt and kite whenever possible. The fourth ability required players to stand still at the right time. Vibe check was a channeled spell, and it would deal deadly amounts of damage and apply 10 stacks of cultural appropriation for every half a yard traversed. <laughs> the fifth and the most deadly of the abilities effectively acted as an enrage timer. The trend apocalypse caused spectral normies to convert the numbers of tweets about a topic on Twitter that was hot at the time. This number became a percentage increase to their damage output. In every scenario imaginable, this would have led to damage outputs that could not be survived. The encounter lasted for quite a while, as all five normies were bound to die simultaneously due to mob mentality, which made them share health. The fight was quite strenuous. The guild leader called for a bio break, so everyone went AFK, with the exception of one guild member though, Ale Muncher, who decided to spend the time browsing his precious mount collection. But suddenly, Spyro left the group. Huh? Ale Muncher thought this must have been a mistake, so he right-clicked Spyro's name and pressed Suggest Invite. But it said that Spyro was already in a group. In fact, he was its leader. Oh no. Suddenly, like a thunderstorm, scores of players phased into the area. They were not in the guild's group, and because it was a free-for-all area now, they were hostile to one another. Mr. Ailmuncher started to panic. All of his friends were still AFK, save for himself. He had noticed that all of these players were from a foreign realm too. The blood started to spill. But at least their deaths were painless, since they were AFK. He tried running away, but was pinned down by the enemy. Spyro held him trapped against the ground and refused to let him go. Ailmuncher looked up and spat at him. You're a damn traitor, Spyro. <laughs> Allow me to reveal my true identity. Ow. Ow. Who the fuck? <clears throat> and now, I shall claim the right to be the first player in the entire world to set foot into this new raid. After all, me and the raid boss have a very special score to settle. The world first kill shall be mine. <laughs>
You! What were you doing? You nearly got yourself killed. Did I not say that you would be a burden? That you would not survive in the wild? That you had no place amongst us? I have never been so wrong in all my life. Somebody tweet this at McConnell and make sure he knows about this.